Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on a solid state uh, drive that I deemed as unrecoverable a while back. The reason I want to bring this case back and try it once again is because I obtained a pad repair kit that I think is going to be very good to confirm whether or not this case can still be solved or if it's a total write-off. So you're telling me there's a chance. Uh, those of you who are new to this channel, this channel is all about data recovery, guys. If you're interested in this subject, do subscribe. I also really appreciate your thumbs up and comments underneath the video. That's what helps this channel grow. So thank you for that. So let's find out what's going on with this thing. First, I'm going to remove the memory component from the donor PCB that I used. Uh, clean it up with some alcohol so that there's no more sticky residue from flux that was left behind on our first attempt. Most likely due to the lack of heat on initial removal of this memory chip, whoever did it uh, ended up pulling quite a bit of pads from this chip. As you can see, all of the uh, round circles that are not shiny silver color are no longer present on the board. Our job today is to restore these pads so they are just like they were from the factory. And the purpose of that is so that I can use an adapter to establish connection via NAND protocol with it. This is what the pad repair kit looks like. Uh, all of the pads are already pre-cut and you just need to peel them and stick them onto your device that you're trying to repair. The size of these pads is perfect for our unit. All that's left is figure out how to secure them in place. This is where the cure mask comes in extremely handy because we can apply it in small quantities, just enough to hold the pad and prevent it from moving up and down the board when we solder the lead to the ripped off trace. Now before I had this uh, repair kit, what I ended up doing is that uh, using a fiberglass scratch pan, I removed the entire protective layer to expose the copper and uh, leftover traces uh, which eventually I wired directly to the pad on the donor SSD to establish that uh, pseudo connection. Um, now that process didn't end up being successful and uh, to this day I question myself uh, as to why. Was it due to poor connection incompatible version of firmware inside of the uh, uh, controller or was it a problem with the memory chip right at the start none of that was known to me but doing this today will eliminate those doubts because if we don't end up getting an ID from the chip after the repair is done then the problem is obviously related to the memory itself and that's where the story will end I could obviously wire this NAND chip directly to the uh, NAND protocol adapter for monolithic devices, but with amount of work that was gonna be put into it, I chose not to. Um, but today's case, once we're done with the repair, it will be as easy as pushing this chip into an adapter that automatically is going to make all these connections. So uh, I really wanted to see this through. So now that we are done with uh, all of the pads placements, we can apply more mask uh, just so that they're begin to uh, cure and then uh, soldering will be performed so we can actually attach these pads to wherever they need to go and uh, without worrying about them sliding all over the place when the flux is applied when the heat is applied plus we're gonna be uh, uh, attaching them with the soldering iron so that's gonna definitely apply some pressure to these pads. These pads are really light. They're really small. Uh, as you guys can see, uh, working with the microscope right now. And uh, these tweezers, they're really, really pointy. And uh, <laughs> comparing the tip of the tweezer to the end tail of this pad, it's a massive difference. I'm trying not to put too much of the mask right now because uh, the drop has to hold the chip to the pad and once the curing of the entire thing is done once we're finished up 
I want to make sure that I clean up these pads and leave them round. So if we do end up adding uh, solder balls to them, solder balls have the entire area to get linked to. So time to solder this thing up. So making sure that uh, it has enough uh, flux and uh, really precise tip, really good quality tip. Uh, this JBC station is amazing for this sort of work. So I have uh, full confidence in it to perform well in this situation and attach all of these pads uh, like they should be. But obviously, uh, if they slide off a little bit, it's not a huge deal. We can always come back and correct it later. Some of these wires, I should have been more kind of precise with which direction they're pointing in and again this is the first time I'm using this kit so there we go that's good so I'm just gonna go through all of them and link them like that and that's it next one I want to add more flux to new pads that are not fluxed yet so whatever I left a little bunch before I'm just dipping my tweezers into it because we just need a tiny bit of flux to make solder flow so some of the tricky wires like this I don't know why I didn't direct it didn't point the lead more towards the via hole um, but yeah, we have to uh, make sure that it's not going over into the ground pad because if it does, the, the, then the pad will be in short. And uh, obviously, we'll have to come back and fix it. This one I struggled with a little bit. And uh, if extra solder gets dropped in, you can always push it away with a, with a tip. Just by dragging that uh, solder ball further down into the ground plane. So this is it. Let's add some alcohol, clean up the board, and uh, have it tested. Let's probe it out to make sure our connections are good. And it seems to be good now. So to, to check these signals and their attachments, you just need a multimeter. Uh, pretty much any modern multimeter will have this mode I'll highlight it here for you these two will produce a noise uh, when continuity is present so that's what I'm using right now so adding more mask to this thing to seal off everything that is exposed that we don't need to to have exposed and then just dropping this chip underneath the UV light and this is the end result as you can see our mask had hardened and I'm just going to remove these extra um, spots like in the center of our pads so that if we do need to apply solder balls like I said um, there's nothing that's going to be interfering with them There is the socket for our device, LJ52 or LJ60, in a 14 by 18 pattern. Uh, put the component in like this, just lock it in. What we want to confirm now is that the chip is alive still, and that we have all the connections necessary to. Uh, get data 
off of the unit. So if we go read ID, either we were dealing with a problematic chip right at the start, or we have something that is short to ground. So the red probe goes on the ground plane, and we probe this one. You see, it's not making any noise at all. Any other pad that is connected is going to make that single beep. Up here. And this is most likely power. And now it's short to ground. Let's find out if uh, any of the pads that we repaired are short to ground or was it short before any of this occurred because the way that this chip arrived it had all these pads missing but it was at the data recovery shop before so the reason why they removed the chip was probably because there was a problem with the SSD otherwise the chip would not need to be removed and uh, there is no way there's definitely no point in denying that the, the chip itself could have had a problem initially and if that was the reason why the SSD stopped working, then these rip pads is just a secondary issue. So we're gonna go and check all of the ones that we attached. And none of them ring out. So the pads that we had already in short were, were in short prior to the failure. Unfortunately, um, this is not going to resolve our case and uh, this is the SSD that it came off of. Uh, this area was all cleaned out and um, a few things I rearranged. I tried to test the controller and uh, it all pointed to the, to the NAND. I guess it uh, would have been smarter to uh, find out where the um, uh, pads for power and ground are and just check them prior to putting this unit through all of this unnecessary repair work. But uh, this video, guys, shows you how pads on even deadliest of the chips can be restored. Now, if we didn't have the internal issue, I'm pretty sure we would be able to just repair that SSD or swap this memory over to another SSD and get it to work. This is the uh, donor SSD that I acquired. I planted the chip on it uh, using these wires. I just literally wired every single pad on this device with uh, isolated wire and the chip was taped to this double-sided tape right here and every pad was connected. And the unit would not work. It would still show that it's in the uh, sh in a short. So in conclusion, if the chip wasn't short on the inside, maybe there would be a way to fix it. But since it is, the repair kind of fixes the pad issue, but it still doesn't give us um, any resolution or doesn't doesn't get us any closer to the data that's on this device. But uh, just to make sure that the connection wasn't an issue, um, I went ahead and did this so that I could test it on the um, programmer to see if we can read it out or not. The board uh, that had all the wires hanging off of it here, I cleaned it up and uh, basically all it has now is a removed memory from the SSD. So if this unit was defective in any way, we would not get any recognition from the device. Most likely uh, the entire bottom row uh, of these registers would be uh, lighting up. But if I go to power on, the light on the SSD turns on, our registers, uh, they look good. Uh, we got a ready signal. You can see the controller is recognized. We really have no uh, alternatives but to uh, call this case uh, unrecoverable and send it back. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate uh, you taking time. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer all of you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.